My name is Linda Ordaway. I'm a regional biologist for the Rough Grouse Society, and my region is the Mid-Atlantic and Southern Appalachian region. To me, a forest isn't a single stand. When I look at a forest, it's sort of across the region. It's at a very, it's a much larger scale. A healthy forest is a forested landscape whose components are multiple ages. Um, if you think of it as a, a human population, if you had only old in the population, it's not very diverse. You don't have much recruitment coming into your population, so you're not going to really have that, an opportunity for that full cycle to build this lower level of the young. So if we have strictly all old forests, um, there's no population recruitment. We're not building anything. Birds that use, uh, I'm going to talk about birds primarily here, birds that use the old, older stands, older timber stands that might be 160 to 200 years old, will also use the ones that were just cut two years ago. Is a higher proportion of cover, food, and um, during migration, they're, they're great stopover sites. So it's, it's all a system and it's a dynamic system. It's not a static system. And I think that's the big misconception is that these stands shift in ages and that we are looking at a fluid and a dynamic system. I think the most important part of the role of uh, a biologist in my region is to get the message out. You know, you, you can see it through multiple conservation organizations that, uh, and national forests and state forests and, you know, other agencies that there's an understanding or a repetitiveness of the phrase that, you know, we need more early succession habitat. But to be able to tell somebody why and show somebody, whether it's a field trip or I might be inside of a, a, a classroom where you, know, you can't really take them out and show them that, but be able to explain to them why. And explain to them why in terms of, you know, I can, you can build a house, which a forest will provide shelter. But if there isn't a refrigerator in there, there's nothing to eat, what have I done for somebody? So, so that's where you can draw these analogies and, and to be able to get that message out to as many diverse groups that we need. If they're already hunters, they probably understand it. If they have somebody in their household that's a hunter, they're probably gonna grow up understanding it to a bigger extent than, than some people that we may not get an opportunity to touch. We have a responsibility whether you're a property owner or somebody who uses a national forest or a state park or a state game lands, every time you go out there you're building a memory. And when I go to some of these uh, and talk to some of our older members, they have some really good memories and fond memories um, of, of woods experience and hunt experiences. And we have that responsibility to make sure that other people can sit there as they grow old, can share those same types of memories. I want to be able to have those same types of memories. And selfishly, if I can do that part so I can maintain and develop, have those kinds of memories, um, I think that's what we need to strive and, and go for is build those memories and you need to build memories to, to pass down. So join a group, join an organization that is helping to ensure the, to ensure the opportunity, um, to increase the opportunity that, that you're gonna have those memories.